Hello, everybody. This is Brandon with ExpeditiousFool.com, putting mindfulness in motion. And uh, here's my attempt, again, uh, to try and explain the unexplainable. So, we'll start with suffering. That's the big thing. So why does suffering exist? Suffering exists because we have to have such a longing, such a longing built up, that we have the discipline and determination to dedicate to ourselves. By having that discipline and determination to dedicate to ourselves, to our spiritual daily process, right? By having that, we start to love ourselves, we start to realize who we are, we start to realize who we're not. And I mean a fiery, fiery intensity. As Bhagavan Das says, in order to truly know God, you have to want God like a drowning man wants air, right? So we have this suffering to continue, and suffering really is a perception, right? So it continues and it continues and it continues until we finally decide to dedicate and surrender fully, first to ourselves to put in the work, right? And then through that full surrender, not I'm in this spiritual process and, you know, I'm this soul and I have to correct this. No, fully dedicating to ourselves and I'm in the grind every day, every day. This is the only thing that's important. This is so, is so important. This is more important than anything. We eliminate those distractions because those distractions will only take us away. Fully dedicate and surrender to ourselves. Then what we learn is that we, you, are God. And so you've then surrendered to God completely, not as a soul, which isn't a separate entity floating around. No, you fully surrendered. And then all of the lines are broken down and you're God. That's why suffering exists. Think of it on the scale of evolution. All right. Evolution, we evolved from a one-cell organism, right? That one-cell organism multiplied and multiplied and multiplied, turned into other things, which changed and turned into other things. Humans have been around for a long time with very little evolution. Why? Because this planet, if you think about it, it's, um, it's a cell producer. We can think of it like that. If we need logical terms, it's a cell producer. And what's it producing? Cells for God. Source is ever expansive. God is ever expansive. It's omnipotent. It goes everywhere, right? And this may not be the only one, but this is the one we can discuss on because this is the one we're on. So it's a cell producer. As things evolve on this planet, they eventually return to source as another form of its expansion. But without the suffering, without the struggles, without learning all of these different things about life, right? We don't ever earn the energetic quality as God until we've went through enough experiences. Once we get to the human body, it's a whole bunch of sufferings in different ways. That way it teaches us to rise above those. It teaches us to get above those. It teaches us to go against those distractions, regardless of how, how wonderful they seem, right? And so as we do that, as we evolve, as we continue to go, as we continue to suffer, we decide to evolve ourselves. We decide to put in the daily faith, the practice. I might as well surrender because I've tried everything else, right? And when we finally get to that point, that's why all of the sages, all of the texts talk about, you know, you get God's grace, officially get God's grace, when he recognizes, she recognizes, it recognizes um, how much effort you've put in. And a lot of times that's, that's the case of it. You get as much grace as you've put in. Now, why is that? Because it's that much more recognition of who you truly are. And once you energetically are at a level where, okay, now I'm 
I'm at this peak level here, I am God, and I'm acting as such. Not just I am God and I'm still acting egotistical. No, I'm, I'm God on this plane and I'm acting as such. Once you get to that level, now you're primed. You've evolved into a proper cell that can, once, it, once you die, it can return to source. If not, then energetically, wherever you're at, will be recycled to try and put in a certain situation. And who puts it in there? You do, because you're God. The intelligence inside you, the same intelligence that decides where all these little cells go, decides where you go. And that's where everybody gets that. The soul picks its, its parents, it picks its purpose. Yeah, because all of those purposes are to try and push you in this same direction, this same realization the same oneness. And if it doesn't work, okay, we'll try again. Comes back around, okay? So that is essentially the game that nobody sees. They're too close. When you look inward enough with enough, enough intensity, then you're able to zoom out with the camera. When you can do that, you can see everything working. You can see everything operating, just as I've said. I don't expect a lot of folks to believe this, even though it backs up, you know, a lot of the Hindu philosophy, reincarnation, karma. It's not a bad thing. Karma is not coming to get you because it's bad. No, it's trying to align your energy so you can go back to source. But I hope that if you don't believe it, you at least entertain the thought. You start doing some of the work, diving into it a little bit, diving into a daily sadhana, breath work, meditation, yoga, over and over and over again. You find somebody that does have these types of understandings to be a teacher for you in your times of, of confusion. This is my wish. This is my hope. This is my mission. This is my dharma to teach exactly what I said in many, many different ways and to help those along their way. Namaskaram.